Today's video is going to be an experiment. We are going to use reflectors to reflect light directly on 100 watt panels and we're going to see how much power they can produce. We have a rich solar polycrystalline 100 watt on the left. In the middle we have a Renogy 100 watt monocrystalline. And then on the far right we have a monocrystalline flex panel by ML Solar. And the reason I chose these three panels is that the polycrystalline is only $80 and it has a different temperature coefficient than the other more expensive monocrystalline and flex panels. Also the flex panels should have a slightly different temperature coefficient just because the solar cell is encapsulated by a different material. The Renogy panel in the middle is different because it's overpriced in my opinion. So having these three panels up against each other is a good comparison. So the first question I want to answer is how much power a 100 watt panel can produce produce with reflectors that will be very interesting but because we're dealing with higher temperatures I also want to test the temperature coefficient of these various solar panels so as a solar panel cell increases in temperature the efficiency drops so what we're gonna do first is measure the output of the solar panel without any reflectors and then while the solar panel is still relatively cool we're gonna put the reflectors on and then test the output and then we're gonna let it sit in the heat for about 10 minutes. And then we're gonna test the output again to see if it changed. And then we're gonna put a fan on the solar panel to cool it off. And then we're gonna test it a fourth time to see if it changes it all again. But for now, I'm gonna put all of these solar panels away so they're nice and cool. And then we're gonna bring them back out when the sun has moved over there. And today the sky is perfect for this test. There is not a cloud in sight. What we're using to test the output of these panels we have a lithium iron phosphate battery an mppt and then we have an rc hobby watt meter and never are the panels connected in parallel or series they are connected directly to the mppt when adjusting these things it's very easy to see where the sun shines so i think i'm going to put it about right here but we have to change it slowly for each and every single panel so we have the maximum amount of reflection for each one and if i just put my hand here it starts heating up so it's definitely working so the first panel we're testing is a flexible solar panel and it's cold and right now it's producing 82 watts now we're going to put the reflectors up now that the reflectors are up it's producing 96.7 96.8 watts continuous. That is so cool, 97 watts. We're almost hitting 100 watts. Now we're gonna let this solar panel sit in the sun for 15 minutes. All right guys, this panel is insanely hot and it is pulling 91 watts. So now we're gonna set a fan up and see if we cool it down, if we can increase the power output. So the best I can get is 94 watts. It slowly increases and it helps it, but man, this panel is really hot and hard to cool down now. Now we're gonna test a Renogy monocrystalline 100 watt. So the panel is nice and cold and we're gonna test the output first. So with a cold panel, we are getting 84 to 85 watts continuous. All right guys, we are getting 100 watts with the Renogy monocrystalline 100 watt panel. That's a first. Now this panel is nice and hot and it's only producing 91.6 to 92 watts continuous. Now we're going to put the fan on and see if we can increase the output. And it's getting windy so that's perfect. Now with cooling we're getting 92.5 to 92.9 but it's pretty steady and it's not increasing. I've been trying to cool it for a while now with different angles and it's not doing it. Oh we hit 93. All right, now we have the polycrystalline without any reflectors, cold panel, it's producing 102.6.5 watts. 102 watts, and there are no reflectors on this thing. These panels are so good. That is like amazing. Now let's put the reflectors on. All right guys, cold solar panel, polycrystalline, 121.6 watts. 120, 122 watts. <laughs> it's crazy because as this panel heats up, I can watch the output drop. You can watch the numbers slowly decrease. All right guys, now this panel is really hot and it's only producing 113 watts. But just like in my previous test, the polycrystalline by Rich Solar did really well. And this thing is like $50 cheaper than the Renogy monocrystalline panel. So I'm just amazed that the polycrystalline is just doing so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the highest output monocrystalline I have and test it next because this is just crazy. I don't know why these things are doing so well. 
And this is my high output monocrystalline panel. It's still rated for 100 watts, but it always produces more than my other monocrystalline 100 watt panels. And it also has a black frame. So maybe the temperature coefficient is different because this can absorb more heat. So this actually might be really interesting. Let's try it. Unfortunately, my reflectors are not as big as this thing because it's such a big panel, but all well. So the first test is the panel is cold and it's producing 94 to 95 watts continuous. Now we have the reflectors up and it's producing 108 watts continuous. So now this panel's hot and it's only producing 98 watts. So it seems to me that being a black frame panel is not good and you can feel it is super hot. And because of the higher temperature, it will probably degrade faster compared to a silver or white colored frame solar panel. I was actually expecting the monocrystallines to do a little bit better, but I guess not. I've had a fan on it, but it's not cooling it down much. We're still only producing 97 watts. So yeah, the fan's not doing much, especially with this color. It just absorbs all the radiant heat. So because the rich solar polycrystalline was the winner of this test, we're going to reconfigure some of these reflectors and try to get the highest amount of output in watts that we can get. So I'm going to let this cool down for a bit. All right, guys, right now we're producing 125 to 126 watts. Now we have a third reflector directly on the panel, and we're getting 131 watts. 131 watts. I've seen it spike at 132, but I think that's the maximum I can get. Now the panel is starting to heat up, and it will slowly start to decrease output. I'm trying to cool it with the fan, but it keeps decreasing. It's at 120 watts now. So fast forward to six hours later, and I finally got to do the calculations of my results. And it's crazy because it was just a backyard experiment, and you would think it's a little sloppy, but I got consistent numbers for the percent increase when the reflectors were added, regardless of what panel it was. It's crazy, I actually got the exact same numbers sometimes, so let's go over these results. So first I'm gonna tell you all of the calculations and then I'm gonna tell you what I think about them at the end. So first we have the flex panel. It went from 82 watts to 97 watts with reflectors. So we can say that it's running at 118%. And then when we get the panel hot, there's a 7% drop in power and then when we add the fan there is a three watt increase in power because we're cooling off the cells and now get this with the Renogy monocrystalline panel we went from 84.5 watts to 100 watts that's exact same 118 percent number so the flex panel and the Renogy monocrystalline even though they're very different they still have the same percent increase in power production and now let's talk about the drop in power when the panel's really hot so for the Renogy monocrystalline it was 8% drop. It's almost the same as the flex panel of 7%. And then when we try to cool down the Renogy monocrystalline panel, we only had a one watt increase of power. Now the next one is the rich solar polycrystalline. We went from 102 watts to 122 watts. So that means it was running at 119%. And when the panel got hot, we had an 8% drop. So it was the same exact number that we got for the Renogy monocrystalline. And then when we put a fan on it at the very end of the video it was only a two watt increase and now we have the rich solar monocrystalline and it went from 95 to 108 this was the black solar panel and that means it was only running at 113 percent it's the worst one of them all and when this panel was hot it went from 108 down to 98 so we had a 10 percent decrease and then when we try to cool it down we only got a one watt increase so it was pretty bad so what do I think about these results? It's pretty interesting. So the first thing that we learned is there's not that big of a difference between the monocrystalline and the polycrystalline. Alt Eastor actually went over this in one of their videos and they talked about temperature coefficient between mono and polycrystallines causes a thousandth of an amp difference because the voltage decreases for the polycrystalline. And in our results, one of the monocrystallines had less of a drop than the polycrystalline, but the monocrystalline from Renogy was the same drop as a polycrystalline. So it doesn't make that big of a difference at all. The next thing that we learned is that trying to cool off solar cells with a fan is not a good idea. It doesn't cool them off that much. And if you think about all we had was a one to three watt increase in power production with a huge 80 watt fan on the solar panel. And we need to understand that the internal cell temperature is hard to change. 
And I know a lot of people want to increase the efficiency of a solar cell by using a water-cooled system or some fans, but at the end of the day, it doesn't do much. The only thing that you want to make sure it doesn't do is overheat in a convective flow of air behind and around the panel or having it up one inch off of the roof is plenty. But trying to come up with all of these elaborate systems doesn't do a whole lot. The increase in power is really not worth it. Now, what do I think about reflectors with solar panels? About seven years ago, I used to build these frames with PVC pipe and then I would put aluminum foil and cardboard to fill in the spaces and I would use these reflectors on my RV. This was a long time ago when solar panels were really expensive. I only had like a 400 watt setup and those panels were insanely pricey. Um, I'd have to sit there and every hour or two move the reflector so that it was pointed directly at my panels and after trying to mess with that for a week it wasn't worth my time and honestly if you think about the trouble a reflector takes to move it and make sure that it's reflecting on your solar panels you could just buy another solar panel and then just point them all at the sun. And another thing to note about tilting solar panels and reflecting and all that is that a lot of people don't understand that whether the sun is directly situated on the solar panel or off by like 15 or 20 degrees, it's not gonna change the output by that much. The solar panel can still use that power. So I learned back then not to use reflectors and I learned right now that you shouldn't use reflectors. Just buy some more solar panels. I just wanted to do this test for fun and I was really curious about the mono versus polycrystalline because a lot of my commenters were talking about that but when you test it it's really not a big difference so yeah i hope you guys like this video i found the results to be very cool and the things that we learned were very interesting i hope you guys like this video and i'll talk to you later bye